most of what's driving change right now is actually the financial need. Um, there's a lot of expense in healthcare that's too much expense and not for the right reason. People aren't getting good care for even though it's very expensive. We are in a system that is larger than any one person and so there's a lot of people trying to um, work their way through a very complex system and um, which makes it challenging and changing it is even more challenging. Um, we are paid actually to um, see people when they're sick and we're paid when people are sick and go to the hospital. We're not paid for people to be healthy. We're not paying for um, making sure they get to their appointments on time and or for good outcomes. So part of this is to look at um, not only what are the um, social and, and behavioral parts of uh, keeping people healthy, but what are the new ways that we can pay for health care um, that helps people to align with the getting healthy and staying healthy, not getting sick and staying sick. It's uh, working with multiple different people that touch the lives of folks that use the system in ways that um, aren't good for the patient and aren't good for the system. So basically these folks are going into the emergency room uh, very, very frequently or being hospitalized really frequently. And um, that drives the cost up and it's also not where these people want to be. They'd like to be healthier and at home or maybe see their, seeing their primary care doctor. So we um, put together some of the federally qualified clinics in town, which is La Clinica and the Community Health Center, as well as the mental health folks at Jackson County Mental Health and some of the addictions and recovery folks in, at the ARC and at OnTrack. So this, this group of five came together and said, how can we help the medical system support these folks to access care in a better way and decrease costs? And so um, by doing so, we're looking at a population that's maybe um, eight percent of the population of the Medicaid population and they um, cost the system about 40 percent of the dollars in a year. So it's a big, it's a big impact we hope to have. We um, are working in close collaboration with the um, uh, Care Oregon Health Plan. They help, they have um, served this region for the Medicaid population for a number of years and they are helping to fund this project. So they basically, as a health plan, they know the numbers that they have. They see how many patients have gone to the emergency room how many times. And they can get, then give us that information and specific to the doctors in the clinics. And they can say, all right, you, these patients in your clinic have seen the emergency room 10 times in the last month, and these guys have been hospitalized eight times in the last year. So knowing that information, we then have created an outreach system with community health workers. So the funds um, that are helping to support this project pay for um, those staff uh, members that are called community health workers. These folks go out into the community. They're, they are clinic-based. They do interact with the primary care doctor and get to know the primary care doctor as well as the patient. But they go out into the community and meet the patient where they are. It's really important to establish trust with the patients. And so some folks are not ready to work with a community health worker. So that's one of the first challenges that we, chase, that we face. The other one is that um, many times there's just so many barriers to getting health care for these folks and that have nothing to do with the medical system. Sometimes it's about housing. Sometimes it's about the right um, care facility that they're in. Uh, sometimes it's about getting reading glasses and uh, not as much about how they actually interact with their primary care doctor. Uh, the new models of care are really about helping people to get care they need right when they need it rather than waiting a long time. And so the only way this person knew how to get care at the time they needed it was to go to the emergency room, sometimes with an ambulance, which is a very expensive way to get primary care. So um, the, out -care, the outreach worker, the community health worker, helped them understand what are the options and what are the resources in our community with TransLink to help them get same-day access um, through transportation. So again, not about health care and not about medical needs. It's really about can they get to the appointment in time and can they get to the right place. So um, helping them to understand that. And then working with TransLink to say, how can we improve same-day access to many or maybe even all of our, our patients? There is a lot of um, interest in working with these patients uh, and helping them to self-determine. This isn't somebody going in there and telling them how to do things and that they're a bad person and they're doing it wrong, but it's really about helping them to learn how to fish than just handing them a fish. So it's saying, all right, so you're stuck, and what can we do together? What do you think you should do to get to a new place kind of thing? So it's really working with the patient. That's a new part of the model as well. So we're probably three to six months into this, and um, it's already showing an important um, reduction in care and improvement in care. 
I mean, a reduction in cost and improvement in care. And so um, people are starting to get really interested and curious about it, and they want to join in. So we're hoping that we can spread this to other clinics in the, in the area, not just with the FQHCs, but other groups that want to participate. And then I think that uh, we need to look at other payment models to help support this long term. Um, so when the money is shared and, sa and when the money is saved, that we can share it with all the people that are, that are working together. Thank you.